What are the key benefits of free space laser communication links compared with traditional ways of linking satellites and other aerial platforms? Laser communications is a, quite a new technology. It has not been used uh, commercially and at scale previously. And it's, a, I would say, the, the next leap in wireless communication, really. It uses 10,000 time, 10, times the frequency of existing radio communication technology, but it's still an electromagnetic wave, essentially. It's just uh, operating at a way higher frequency, so you can pack a lot more data into that uh, data signal. Um, essentially, it's the, the equivalent of a fiber optic cable, but wirelessly and not using the cable. Um, and used to com communicate between satellites or communicate between aircraft and uh, airborne vehicles. Um, I'd say there's, there's three key benefits to using that kind of new technology. Um, the first being very high speed. So when you're looking at laser communication today, um, our current products can do 10 gigabit uh, per second already. Um, that's a data rate you, you cannot easily achieve with radio communication and it's really just the start. It's the baby steps of laser communication because again, th this technology is, is just, uh, just emerging sort of from the, from the labs. It's not yet rolled out commercially at a scale. Um, so what we are looking uh, forward to is using this kind of technology with the same technologies used in fiber optic networks today to demonstrate uh, hundreds and thousands of gigabits per second. So, so high, high speed, a broadband uh, speed, fiber-like uh, speed essentially is the first benefit of laser communication. Um, secondly, it's about security. So a laser beam, as you, as you all know, is, is, is very directed. Uh, it's going in, in one direction only, um, like a laser pointer essentially which is very different to radio communication, uh, which um, expands in the worst case even spherically. So, so whenever you are, or you don't have to be at a very specific location in a radio frequency beam to be able to intercept, to jam, to interfere with a radio communication link. And that's completely different with lasers. With lasers, um, the beam is so narrow that it's practically almost impossible um, to interfere or jam that signal or to eavesdrop on that signal, right? Because you, you would need to be in this very tiny beam. And, and lastly, and, and that essentially combines um, the, the, the physical aspects of laser communication with the first two benefits I mentioned, is that it's, it's quite cost efficient if you look at it per bit. So this technology is is uh, planned to be deployed in large-scale communication networks. And what you're looking for there is to have a communication technology that is very efficient on a cost per bit basis. And because we can transmit uh, so large data packages through laser communication, um, the, the cost efficiency, the cost per bit is quite beneficial. Um, so in a, in a sum, it's important to understand laser communication will not replace radio communication. Um, but it will be used whenever you want to transmit large amounts of data or you want to establish sort of the data highways between satellites or between aircraft. This is when you would use laser communication. And which companies and government agencies are planning to use free space laser communications links? It's an entirely new market. This, this market didn't exist before and nobody uh, ever established large-scale communication networks in air and space. But this is exactly what the kind of companies operating in this field are trying to do within the next couple of years. Um, the, the first attempts have been done by really Google and Facebook, I would say. They were playing around with airborne vehicles a couple of years ago. Um, and, and this is now, uh, or has been taken over by developments in space, where we're seeing a couple of organizations, and I'll, I'll name a few in a minute, um, that are trying to establish large-scale satellite networks, um, mostly for establishing global broadband connectivity solutions. So you, you want to establish uh, space-borne communication networks that can link any, any point on Earth with any other position on Earth with uh, fiber-like speed through space, essentially, that, that's the plan. These developments are currently driven and spearheaded by governmental organizations, really. So we see in the US, the, the Space Development Agency, which is essentially the, the technology incubator of the Space Force, and you also see DARPA, which is sort of the technology incubator of the General Department of Defense in the US, 
they're paving the way for this kind of technology, laser communications, but also constellations at large um, being deployed. They are, for example, working on interoperability, um, which lowers the risk for everybody who is seeking to deploy this kind of technology. Um, the, the, this is not the, the major use case, really. So, so these governmental organizations, they're, they're just paving the way for the commercial operators. And we see already a few of these. We see SpaceX, of course, having launched a couple hundred satellites already, not yet at large equipped with laser comms, but they wanted to. Um, we're seeing Amazon, who is planning to launch thousands of satellites. We're seeing Telesat wanting to launch uh, satellites, OneWeb, and so on. So quite a few commercial players. We, we believe these are really just the 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 first movers the prime movers in this market so so there's more uh, coming and we are seeing already and hopefully in europe um players emerging so hopefully that's coming up at the moment this is really a um a game that is being played in the us and in china um but we see these commercial operators as being the real driving force here. The, the defense operators, they're they are the first ones, they're the front runners. They're they are paving the way for the commercial uh, ones to deploy their satellites at scale. And what are the advantages of Minaric's laser communications terminals compared with those offered by your competitors? We differentiate mostly through our product focus. Um, we work on standardized products that are applicable and usable in a large array of applications. So uh, the, the applications of the, the customers may differ, but our products do not differ. Um, so we, we want to standardize as much as possible. Why? Because by doing so, we can produce at larger scales and we don't have to develop a new product for every single customer. We, we believe this is really the only way this technology, which has been around, don't get me wrong, laser communication has been around for maybe 30 years already, but it has never been used at scale. Why? Because it was too expensive to be deployed. You can only break uh, these cost points and, and bring that down if you come up with standardized solutions, with products rather than one-off projects and prototypes. So this is exactly what my narrative focus is and what, how we are differentiating against the competition. Um, we are building, our, we, we understand ourselves as the, the, um, the spearheading force in industrializing laser communication. Um, we want to be the ones uh, being the first able to produce at acceptable price, accept, at acceptable quality, and at acceptable unit volumes uh, in this market. And we're we not talking unit volumes of uh, a few or a few dozen, but we're working with with customers and we as a company, we have the focus to, to work on uh, or to, to produce these, this kind of equipment in the hundreds and the thousands. Um, so, so we are doing everything we can to enable the supply chain also that's behind our products to be able to supply these kind of unit, uh, unit volumes. What's, what's different with Maneric is that, that we, are, we are proactive in this approach. So we, we don't wait for a contract to materialize and then we run in the direction of how do we implement that contract. We, we are looking at what kind of market we are expecting to be emerging in the next couple of years. Um, and we are building the right company. And, and this is what Maneric is. We're building a company for a future market, right? Um, we're building the right company to equip that market with the right amount, uh, with the correctly priced and with the uh, right specs and right quality product. And please tell us about the status of Minaric's airborne terminal. We just finished really the, the development of the first generation of our airborne terminal. That's the result, I would say, of... of uh, probably 10 years of development essentially and dozens of prototypes we've built along the way. We have a long history. Uh, Maneric is a, a spinner from the German Aerospace Center and we took quite some know-how from there. Then we built prototypes of our prototypes and now finally this first product for the airborne market is ready. So we're, we're quite proud of that actually. Um, what's starting now is a, a, a joint campaign with the lead customer. So that's a US customer we are, we are using this, this first product with. What we want to be doing as part of this campaign is we want to gradually expand the, the mission envelope, uh, as it's been called in the industry, of that product. So we, we want to start small. We want to demonstrate first ground-to-ground -ground link on, on two fixed terminals, essentially. 
Then we want to demonstrate um, fixed dynamic links uh, still on the ground. So one terminal on the truck, one uh, fixed. Then we expand that to one in the air, one on the ground. And eventually we also want to demonstrate air to air links. We, we do that or that customer does that because that they have customers behind them that are quite interested in this kind of capability and less communication as a, as a technology. Um, what, we, what we want to do with this first generation of products is really we want to learn everything we can to improve the product further. So we, we, we want to implement quite short te technology cycles and generation cycles of our products. Um, and, and this first generation product is uh, and will be used exactly for that, to, to go um, with lead customers through first utilization of the product, to learn everything we can to enable the, the actual number deployment, which will be coming after that. Um, so we're looking at 2022, 2023, we are seeing um, intended deployments in the hundreds and thousands um, of laser communication devices, also for airborne vehicles. And for that, you, you need to make the right first steps to deploy that kind of technology. And, and that's exactly the plan with this current uh, product, with our Hawk product, that's our airborne product, um, to utilize that, to, to learn as much as possible, essentially. And to, through that, to get the, our foot in the door with the leading programs in the industry. So, so there, are, there are a few programs that are important and that are being uh, driven forward and that are essentially, uh, again, they are the sp spearheading force, um, the, the first movers in trying out this kind of technology. We need to be in these programs from the very beginning, from the baby steps, uh, sort of. And with this first generation product, we have exactly that product to, to be able to make that show. So, so this first generation product we're having in this Hawk terminal it's our way of making sure we are part of these uh, key programs moving forward. And now, tell us about the status of Menarik's satellite-borne terminal. The satellite terminal is a development we started, I believe, three years ago almost. Um, and now we are coming close to, to finishing that. We are in the final stretches of qualification of the product. What is qualification? We're in the in the space world, in the space industry, you do um, quite extended qualification of products because you don't want to find out once you launch a product to space that it doesn't work. So you have very extensive tests on the ground. Um, the final uh, stretches of these tests are happening as we speak, essentially. Um, why do you do that? Because it's too expensive to, to launch a rocket and find out that it's not working, right? So, so that's the, the idea. Um, we have just recently announced our launch customer for that product. So that's our Condor product. That's our, our satellite product. Um, our launch customer for that will be Telesat and DARPA. And we've just announced a contract there. Um, they will be uh, launching that product on uh, two satellites actually next year. And it's a similar situation as in the, in the airborne domain, I would say. This first generation product is really made to learn everything and also to to enable our customers with, with demonstrating, showcasing, and learning everything they need to learn in how to use laser communication products in spaceborne scenarios and spaceborne applications. So, so this is exactly what, what this customer and also another customer we announced uh, earlier this year wants to be doing. They want to deploy laser communication on a few or maybe a few tens of satellites to, to learn everything they need to learn before they're deploying larger unit volumes, which they are planning from 2022, 2023, we're looking again at hundreds of satellites, maybe even thousands of satellites um, to be equipped with laser communication. And this first generation of uh, a product, uh, which is ready by now, or essentially ready by now, um, is, is used to make sure we are, we are learning um, with them what's needed to deploy these kind of uh, uh, products at scale, also to enable and to empower and to grow our supply chain. Um, so again, I would say it's, it's our way of, um, of getting the foot in the door and securing our market share. If, uh, I believe now, these days, the, the market share for equipping large-scale aerospace uh, networks um, with laser communication are being divided. And uh, us having products in both of these markets, airborne and spaceborne, uh, is making sure that, that we are 
having market shares and uh, it positions us for these larger deployments, uh, which we essentially want to, dom uh, we, we want to do dominate and contribute as much as possible to the, these large-scale uh, large programs. 